Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light. Next year, all our troubles will be out of sight. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Make the youth tight gay. Next year, all our troubles will be miles away. Once again, as in olden days. Happy golden days of your faithful friends who are dear to us will be near to us once more. Someday soon we all will be together if the fate to love until then we'll have to muddle through somehow so have yourself a merry little Christmas You become. It takes a long time. That's why it doesn't happen often to people who break easily, or have sharp edges, or who have to be carefully kept. Generally, by the time you are real, most of your hair has been loved off, and your eyes drop out, and you get loose in your joints, and very shabby. But these things don't matter at all, because once you are real, you can't be ugly, except to people who don't understand. Marjorie Williams Bianco, The Velveteen Rabbit, 1923 It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. There's something to be said for not obsessing about work for a while and taking time to be with people you love. Regardless of one's religious persuasion or lack thereof, there's renewal in communion, with others, with nature, with ancestors, with ritual. It's a good time of year for nature hikes with good friends. We have our phones, but nobody calls. We've got a couple of apples, a bottle of water, and the clouds. There's one task left for me to complete before we head out. It's blessing counting time. 
a safe, warm home to return to. Check. Food in the fridge? Check. Enough money to pay the bills? Check. Friends and family? Check. Each other? Check. Whatever holidays or traditions you celebrate, may they be sweet and filled with more blessings than you can count. The very least you can do in your life is to figure out what you hope for. And the most you can do is live inside that hope. Not admire it from a distance, but live right in it, under its roof. What I want is so simple I almost can't say it. Elementary kindness. Enough to eat. Enough to go around. The possibility that kids might one day grow up to be neither the destroyers nor the destroyed. That's about it. Right now, I'm living in that hope. Running down its hallway and touching the walls on both sides. A master in the art of living draws no sharp distinctions between his work and his play, his labor and his leisure, his mind and his body, his education and his recreation. He hardly knows which is which. He simply pursues his vision of excellence through whatever he is doing and leaves others to determine whether he is working or playing. To himself, he always appears to be doing both. So the shortest day came, and the year died. And everywhere down the centuries of the snow-white world came people singing, dancing, to drive the dark away. Halfway down the stairs is a stair where I sit. There isn't any other stair quite like it. I'm not at the bottom, I'm not at the top. So this is the stair where I always stop. Halfway up the stairs isn't up and isn't down. It isn't in the nursery, it isn't in the town. And all sorts of funny thoughts run round my head. It isn't really anywhere. It's somewhere else instead. The Owl and the Pussycat by Edward Lear The Owl and the Pussycat went to sea in a beautiful pea-green boat. They took some honey and plenty of money wrapped up in a five-pound note. The owl looked up to the stars above and sang to a small guitar. Oh, lovely pussy! Oh, pussy, my love! What a beautiful pussy you are! You are! You are! Whoo! What a beautiful pussy you are! Pussy said to the owl, You elegant fowl! How charmingly sweet you sing! Oh, let us be married! Too long have we tarried! But what shall we do for a ring? They sailed away for a year and a day to the land where the bong tree grows. And there in a wood a piggy wig stood with a ring at the end of his nose. His nose. His nose. With a ring at the end of his nose. Dear pig, are you willing to sell for a shilling your ring? Said the piggy, I will. So they took it away and were married next day by the turkey who lives on the hill. They dined on mince and slices of quince which they ate with a runcible spoon. And hand in hand on the edge of the sand they danced by the light of the moon. The moon, the moon, they danced by the light of the moon. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone and so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue 
or walk with kings, nor lose the common touch. If neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you, but none too much, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with sixty seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it, and which is more, you'll be a man, my son. It was Christmas Eve, and little girl had just hung up her stocking by the fireplace, right where it would be all ready for Santa when he slipped down the chimney. She knew he was coming because, well, it was Christmas Eve. Oh, he'll come, said little girl. I just know he will be here before morning, but somehow I wish. Well, what do you wish? said a tiny voice close by her. Why, I wish I could see Santa myself. I'd just like to go and see his house and his workshop and ride in his sleigh and know Mrs. Santa. It would be such fun, and then I'd know for sure. Ho, ho, ho! Ladies and gentlemen, heed my advice. Pull down your pants and slide on the ice. Happy Holidays from Jim and Rhonda Siebert. The only motto I can think of is something that popped into my head once when I was out walking with a friend and he asked me how the hell it was that I had managed to stay married to the same person for 48 years. And I don't know where this came from, but the words that came out of my mouth were, love isn't something you feel, it's something you do. Then the king turned and asked Bernard, And what have you brought back? Bernard bowed low before the king. He hoped no one noticed the tears in his eyes as he raised his head and said softly, Nothing, your majesty. He told of meeting the ugly ogre who might have frightened the princess. He told of seeing the amazing mice whose painting he could not bring himself to interrupt. He told of the tiny snozzle children that he could not bear to leave alone in the forest. There was silence in the castle. No one spoke for a very long time. The king nodded his head and smiled. Bernard, he said in a loud voice, you have won the right to marry the princess. You brought back a story of kindness and love and consideration for others. Truly the most wonderful thing of all. Very like on earth advancing, all transforming, all entrancing, playing on their way and dancing, soil untarnished yet. Silver stars from sky are dropping, little fairies skipping, hopping, on the roofs and turrets popping, crowns with diamonds set. Greeting nature's silver wedding, ardent splendor they are shedding, and a bridal veil outspreading like a silver net. Till town alleys, foul and tainted, turn cathedral aisles ensainted, carved with gorgeous ermine-painted ornamental fret. Every house a magic tower, every tree with lilac flower, lures like a coquette, following in their magic traces. Following in their magic traces, Hidden joy each heart embraces, sparkling eyes and brightened faces everywhere are met. How I love you, white-robed city, maiden pure and maiden pretty. But my love is, what a pity, tempered with regret. Truer lover you would find me, if you were not to remind me of a cold land left behind me, that I fain forget. Though she be but little, she is fierce. Also, the grass is not always greener on the other side. By the saints, Signor Zoro, eh? Have you come to surrender your wicked sword, Signor? Signor Zoro laughed not unpleasantly, but he did not take his eyes from Gonzales. 
Most certainly I have not come to surrender, he said. I am on business, senor. Business? Gonzales queried. Four days ago, senor, you brutally beat a native who had won your disfavor. The affair happened on the road between here and the mission at San Gabriel. He was a surly dog and got in my way. And how does it concern you, my pretty eye women? I am a friend of the oppressed, senor, and I have come to punish you. Here is a happy farm where everything grows. It has many baby animals that grow up to be big animals. Let's turn the page and see what they are doing. They are all doing something. This is the puppy, all roly-poly and playful. Look at how he has tripped over his own bowl of water. Woof woof, barks the little puppy. When I grow up, I will be a dog. A human being should be able to change a diaper, plan an invasion, butcher a hog, con a ship, design a building, write a sonnet, balance accounts, build a wall, set a bone, comfort the dying, take orders, give orders, cooperate, act alone, solve equations, analyze a new problem, pitch manure, program a computer, cook a tasty meal, fight efficiently, die gallantly. Specialization is for insects. Yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. He exists as certainly as love and generosity and devotion exist and you know that they abound and give to your life its highest beauty and joy. Alas, how dreary would the world be if there were no Santa Claus? It would be as dreary as if there were no Virginias. There would be no childlike faith then, no poetry, no romance to make tolerable this existence. We should have no enjoyment except in sense and sight. The eternal light with which childhood fills the world would be extinguished. Not believe in Santa Claus? You might as well not believe in fairies. Happy holidays, everyone. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old, familiar carols play, and wild and sweet the words repeat of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And thought how, as the day had come, the belfries of old Christendom had rolled along the unbroken song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Till ringing, singing on its way, the world revolved from night to day. A voice, a chime, a chant sublime of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Then from each black accursed mouth, the cannon thundered in the south. And with the sound, the carols drowned of peace on earth, goodwill to men. It was as if an earthquake rent the hearthstones of a continent and made forlorn the households born of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And in despair, I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Then pealed the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail, with peace on earth, goodwill to men. It's not what's under the Christmas tree that matters, it's who is around it. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Hi, Daniela. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Sorry, I'm having trouble with your name. <laughs> I was always fascinated by astronomy and was absolutely transfixed by the Apollo program in the late 60s. The Apollo 10 mission orbited the moon just before Apollo 11 with the famous moonwalkers. As Apollo 10 orbited the moon, 
one of the astronauts said this from Genesis 1, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. That's one of my favorite Bible verses. And what's amazing is that NASA has sent in the Artemis program, the Orion space capsule to the moon that will arrive at the moon tomorrow, November 21st, 2022. Orbit and then return to Earth in preparation 50 years later for a manned mission back to the moon. Incredible. Martin the Mouse woke up when he heard the jingling sounds coming from outside his hole. He yawned, stretched, and got out of bed. Oh, brrr, it was cold. Rubbing his furry arms, he walked towards the hole. He saw a small silver bell lying on the floor. Curious, he picked it up, using two hands, and carried it inside his hole. He noticed how shiny it was. He shook it. Jingle, jingle, jingle. Martin started to laugh. He shook it again. Jingle, jingle, jingle. Stop that! You're making me dizzy, Melody said. Oh, Martin dropped the bell. He was so surprised to hear it talk. He looked at the silver bell and noticed it had big green eyes and a cheerful smile. Hi, my name is Melody. I'm a jingle bit. And wishing a very, very Merry Christmas to all the narrators. Old Santa Claus, with much delight, his reindeer drives this frosty night or chimney tops and tracks of snow to bring his yearly gifts to you. Through many houses he has been and various beds and stockings seen, some white as snow and neatly mended, others that seemed for pigs intended. Where'er I found good girls or boys that hated quarrels, strife, and noise, I left an apple or a tart or wooden gun or painted cart. To some I gave a pretty doll to some a peg top or a ball. No crackers, cannons, squibs, or rockets to blow their eyes up or their pockets. No drums to stun their mother's ear, nor swords to make their sisters fear. But pretty books to store their mind with knowledge of each various kind. But where I found the children naughty, in manners rude, in temper haughty, I left a long black birchen rod, such as the dread command of God directs a parent's hand to use, when virtue's path his sons refuse. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. T'was the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled, all snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama, in her kerchief, and I in my cap, had just settled our brains for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters, and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new-fallen snow gave the luster of midday to objects below. When, what to my wondering eye should appear, but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With a little old driver, so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles his course as they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now, Dasher, now, Dancer, now, Prancer and Vixen, on, Comet, on, Cupid, on, Dunder and Blixem. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now dash away. 
dash away, dash away all. Ho, ho, ho. Like Tonto Flo's cat to the treetop he fly, when the big old hound dog come a run hisself by. Like that up the porch, them old gator climb, with the skiff full of toy and St. Nicholas behind. And then in a twinkling, I heard on the roof, the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney, St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys was flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled, his dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk and laying his finger aside of his nose and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. He sprung to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew, like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim, ere he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light. Next year, all our troubles will be out of sight. Have yourself a Merry little Christmas Make the Yuletide gay Next year all our troubles Will be miles away Once again Until then